see how she's working today. Okay, it didn't freeze up on me this time. It's Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. It's uh, about 8 o'clock Thursday night. We're just getting done for the day, kind of. And uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about predation. And predation is when you have animals that are, you know, wild animals like skunks and coons and possums, um, any of the raptors, uh, could be like bald eagles, um, red-tailed hawks. At nighttime, you get owls. Um, some people have weasels. We don't have those here. Uh, they come and they take your chickens at night. Now, there's a book written by Joel Salatin. It's called Pastured Poultry, and that's in the in the title. I'm not exactly sure. I think it's make 25000 per year on five acres, something like that. Um, and I've read that book cover to cover several times. <laughs> and he's got a section in there about predation, and he goes through... Um, the characteristics of each type of predator and what you know their kills look like on your chickens and I don't really remember what they are um, and the reason I don't remember what they are is because we haven't had predation here in about seven years and I know that for a fact because my son Jim is seven years old and we got him the same time as we got Lily. Lily is a great Pyrenees dog, and she just happens to be up here grabbing a bite to eat. I wanted them to come and get around me, and usually if I sit down, here they come, because they're real scavengers for pets. Come here, Lily. Lily, Lily, come here. Come here. Come here, I want to see you. Come here. All right, I don't care if you take bread. All right, sit down. All right, now she's going to be cagey because she just stole. All right, but that's a pretty good-sized dog. She would be 100 pounds or 110 pounds, something like that. And um, I have two females. Here she goes. She's taking off now. She's sleeking away, slinking away with her with her loot. Um, I have two females. Lily's seven. I don't think she's going to have puppies anymore. Last time she tried, it didn't work out so well. And then there's Minnie right there. She's about five, and she's a good mom. And then Obi is the stud missile. And I, as soon as he knows I want him to do something, he hides out. Oh, oh, at least let's look at you. Obi, come here. What's the matter, boy? Come on. Let's look at you. Come here. Come here. Come here, boy. Come here. Yeah, he knows something's up. Oh, well, these dogs are French from the Pyrenees Mountains. He's being obstinate right now. But I tell you what, I've never had, I've never paid for a dog in my life before I got Lily, and then I paid for him. Um, and he's here so we can have have puppies. And I guess what I'm telling you is the reason I don't remember what any of the kills looked like was because since we got Lily, it's been negligible. I mean, very, very little uh, in the way of predation. And since we got him, I think it's over. I don't think we had any kills last year. And I'm here to tell you that when you have a lot of nice chickens out on the field, you are asking for predation. And, um, you know, when we first started this, I, I was, it was a morale buster for me because I'd go out there in the morning to be five dead chickens. And it just, it was... It's tough to take. It's really tough to take. You got a lot of time and energy into them. You've taken care of them, and then some. Some of the predators will just take their heads. They won't even uh, 
eat the whole bird. And, uh, you know, I have kind of mixed feelings about it. Um, the year that we got the Great Pyrenees, I just noticed that my calves are out. Oh, that's great. The year that we got them, um, would have been, uh, I think, 2006. Uh, well, let's see. Or 10, probably 10. Um, yeah, 2017. Okay, yeah, so it was 10. Um, the predation had been so bad we were going to quit, and I was at a small farms conference, and I ran into Joel Salatin's son, and I asked him about it, and he said, oh, man, you got to get a dog. And I remember saying to him at the time, well, how come, how come that wasn't in the book? I must have missed that part. So we got the dog, and uh, that was the end of it, pretty much. And that was the year that we really expanded our pasture poultry operation, and, you know, the, the rest is history. Now, that year, we were contemplating getting a, um, a night vision scope for our gun so we could uh, shoot at night. And I'd done quite a bit of shooting um, prior to that, you know, I'd come out and shoot stuff at night. and <clears throat> You don't want to do that. And here's what I learned on that. Um, these other predators, I mean, they're doing what they were designed to do. They're just coming in to get something to eat. They're not really stealing from you. They're just trying to survive. And if you take this attitude where anybody that steals from you, you're going to shoot, I mean, where does that end? We have politicians that steal from us every single day. In my life this year, I've had people steal lots of things from me um, because I trusted them. Uh, and, you know, you can't just go shooting everybody that steals from you. You just don't do that. This dog is a guardian dog, and they're sort of like the way we should be. They stand guard. Um, so we should stand guard against those that would seek to steal from us. And they're out there, believe me. I'm going to make a video sometime about uh, the small farms community and how we're like a chain. And we are only as strong as the weakest link. And if we have those amongst us that are going to steal from us uh, in the small farms community, that's not good. And it probably needs to be identified and weeded out. Probably that's how it needs to, that's what needs to happen. So anyway, I'm going to make that video at some point. I just don't feel like doing it now. Um, but predation is probably the biggest morale buster in um, pastured poultry. It's really, really tough. And if you try to deal with it without dogs, you're going to be using a lot of electric fencing. And you have to move your tractors every day, so you're going to add a lot of extra uh, work to it. Uh, moving electric fences is not, uh, you know, portable electric fences. It, it just takes time. And I'm not saying you can't do it. You can. I've seen where people put standoffs on their uh, chicken tractors and then put a little solar charger on each chicken tractor. And I think that would work. But you know, these animals that come in and take your, you know, your chickens, uh, you're really putting out there for them an easy target, you know, and uh, they're going to work at it and they're going to, you know, they're going to try and uh, their best to defeat it. Now, all your raptors, they will go in through the top. So that means you have to have covers on your chicken tractors. Um, when we put our chicken tractors out, which I think we're going to put some out maybe this weekend, because I would like to have the birds out by the time they're four weeks old and we got warm weather coming. Um, I will show you that we don't have covers on our chicken tractors. And with these dogs, I do not need them. I'm hoping sometime when I'm making a video like this, we'll have a crow fly over. Okay. 
Okay, it shut me off for a minute. It said due to poor wireless connection. I've been dealing that with, with that for like a month. Um, but all, th all three of them will take off down this road here, and they kind of remind me of horses because they, they're making these strange barking sounds. You know, like it's it's hard to um, I can't explain it. And uh, you know, they're just running and farting and everything down this this driveway here to get down into the backfield just to chase a crow that may just be flying over. He doesn't even. He didn't even know why they're chasing them, but they just live for that. How they know, I have no idea, because the dogs sleep during the day, and they're up patrolling at night. And we'll hear them periodically barking, but it's a strange uh, relationship that I have with them. Um, some barks will wake me up, and others I, <laughs> I don't even hear, so... You know, sometimes one of my kids will come down and they'll say, well, you know, Lily's out there barking, and, and I will not have even heard it. But then a certain pitch of bark will have me up just like that. And, uh, you know, there's never really been anything too earth-shattering, but I will go out with a spotlight and check and see what's going on. Uh, there was a porcupine that was in the barn one time, and they got it kind of cornered. And uh, their bark was definitely different. And I went out and uh, uh, shooed him out of there. <clears throat> They're pretty smart. Just heard something start up in the barn. Keith's down there working on something. They're pretty smart. They've gotten um, porcupine a couple of times. And that's it. We haven't seen that in a while. Uh, as far as getting sprayed by skunks... That's uh, an occurrence. That's an occurrence. And I remember when I first started farming, I thought, oh, no, what are we going to do? The dog got sprayed because where I grew up, um, we had a poodle. <laughs> and when she got sprayed, oh, man, it was a terrible thing. How do you get her? How do you make her stop smelling? Because she's got to be in the house. These dogs do not come in the house unless they're invited in the house. And if they don't smell good, they don't come in the house. That's all there is to it. So uh, there's a certain philosophy that we have uh, in the farming business. And, I, and Joel explains this in his books. And I, I didn't have this when I first started, but I've learned it. Um, all the animals that are on the farm have to make sense. You know, they, they have to have a reason for being here. Um, even down to the cats that we have. Um, the, our cats don't really have names, and they kind of come and go, but they serve a purpose because they keep the, the mice down in the barn. Um, these dogs, there's three of them, obviously it costs money to feed them. Um, not so much us because we have a butcher shop, and they eat a lot of pig feed. Um, our, the bread that we get and stuff. But um, if you had one of these and you didn't butcher on a, on a regular basis, you would have to feed them. And so it has to make sense to keep them. Um, it's kind of funny how when we sell the puppies, a lot of times we sell Minnie and Lily's puppies to people who don't farm. And I'm thinking, boy, you're going to have a serious feed bill. And some people, they're just willing to deal with that. But they're not farming. And when, when you're farming, everything that you have on the farm has to make sense, you know. Even if it's a, a go-kart. I mean, my kids sacrifice a lot to live on the farm. And if they want to drive around in go-karts, that's something that kids that live in town can't do. Their parents have to take them someplace where they can do it. My kids can just jump on a, a motorcycle or a go-kart or something, and they can tear around and have a good time. And that's... One of the reasons why we farm is so our kids can um, grow up the way I couldn't. I never had a go-kart. I never had a motorcycle or anything like that, and my kids do. But we're talking about predation. Okay, so I guess that really covers it. Um, there's a lot of other ways that you can deal with it, I suppose. You can put out live traps, um, you know, night vision goggles and stuff, and you can patrol all night yourself. Um,
Okay, I'm reconnected. Just the way you should deal with uh, predators. You know, there's always somebody looking to, to steal from you. Always. And so you should just be on guard all the time. On guard. Um, so the guardian dog, I think, is the way to go. Okay, the other thing that I wanted to cover a little bit was uh, visitation. We are going to start up our tours um, after this weekend. This weekend we will not because this Saturday is my birthday, so I won't be doing a tour this Saturday, but after that I will. And I'm going to force you all between the lines, pretty close here between the lines. It is from 1 to 3. We'll stand around for a little while and talk at 1 if people are 5 minutes late, but we're going to load the trailer, the hay wagon, and go for a hay ride. Doesn't cost you anything, um, but you got to call ahead. And the number is on our website, bakersgreenacres.com. The reason the number's there is if you have trouble ordering um, beef, pork, or chicken from us or signing up for one of our classes, you can always call that number, 825-0293. I don't call my own phone number too too much okay so it's 231-825-0293 um call that number somebody will either somebody will answer you, you'll get the answering machine and uh wild people and let us know that you're coming let us know your name number in your party all that stuff um after the tour the store is open from three to five, three, four, five, that's it, two hours. So, you know, we're kind of pushing you in between the lines, but it is, doesn't cost you anything. Um, don't bring your dogs with you. Um, you can bring kids, but they got to stay in line, um, put a leash on them, whatever you got to do. Um, it's more of a informative um, tour. It's good for farmers. It's good, good for people that want to eat our food. So you can see how it's, uh, so you can see how the food is grown. Um, we have, generally have a pretty good time. I really enjoy it. But we'll be, it'll be every weekend throughout the summer until it just kind of peters out. There's not that many people that... There's, it's just not that millions of people that we can uh, pull it off every weekend. If it, if it rains, we'll still go, you know, if people are signed up and you show up. Um, there's really no reason why it won't go unless no one shows up. Uh, if no one calls ahead... Right. If you haven't called ahead and then you just show up on Saturday, I might not be here because if no one's called ahead, I might be fishing or doing something else. And uh, but even if there's only two people for the tour or one and you've called ahead, I will make that time and take you around and show you the whole, you know, whole nickel tour. But uh, if it's elderly folks, we can we can uh, use the front end loader to put you up on the trailer. Uh, little kids have a good time. We'll put some hay out on the trailer and stuff. It's 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 fun, and then we'll have some goodies and stuff when you get back here. Um, there's always some bone broth going, uh, and some good farm water to drink, all that stuff. Who knows how that will go? And then the store is open. Uh, BakersGreenAcres.com. Remember, this is a business, and if the business doesn't work. No more small farms. Small farms have to do business in order to stay in, in business. So please consider supporting this farm, bakersgreenacres.com, and you can order beef, pork, chicken. we got some really neat products. Oh, I'm going to get killed for not mentioning this. We had some burgers made. Our, our processor is an absolute wizard, right? We had some jowl bacons, and they weren't selling so great. So he came up with the bright idea of grinding them in with the hog burgers and made a true bacon burger. They're about 20% uh, baconed jowls, and they are out of this world. They are really something special. So they're available on the website where you can come take the nickel tour, pick up all you want, and take them with you. I think they're going to go over well, so we're going to do it again. All right, um, that's about it for today. 
This is Mark from Baker's Green Acres. Remember, anyone can farm. Do it yourself or do business with somebody that does. Thanks. Talk to you next time.